Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, let me start by thanking you and uh, Chairman uh, Nadler and the Chairman of the Full Committee uh, for having a hearing like this. Um, uh, I was here for the original testimony of all the witnesses, and one of the pervasive thoughts that I had during that process was that we've um, spent six, eight, ten, twelve years unable to have a hearing of this kind uh, that exposes um, a problem that I think every one of the witnesses, law enforcement and um, and non-law enforcement uh, uh, people who are here, uh, recognize is a serious problem because um, uh, we've been preoccupied with um, uh, with uh, criminalizing or um, or categorizing um, uh, uh, members of Congress as being soft on crime, black males as being predators. Um, you know the whole. Uh, process that we've been going through um, and having a hearing of this kind in that political atmosphere um, and with the leadership that we've had of the committee has been impossible. Um, so um, I, I think it's, uh, it's wonderful that uh, our chairs are, are taking this uh, uh, opportunity to to expose a problem and bring light on it because we can't deal with it uh, in the legislative context. Uh, uh, law enforcement is not likely to deal with it in an aggressive law enforcement context unless light and transparency is is there um, and oversight is there. Um, Professor Nanapoff, um, Mr. Murphy um, um, uh, was unwilling to give uh, his legal opinion in the public venue about uh, the legal and ethical responsibilities of law enforcement um, if they find, if they have a snitch uh, who delivers uh, evidence that exonerates. Um, um, I suppose at some point we'll get that information from Mr. Murphy in a private setting. Uh, help me form the context for it in a public setting. Um, what is the legal and ethical responsibility of law enforcement, uh, federal law enforcement, to provide exculpatory evidence to state law enforcement if they obtain it from a snitch or otherwise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm unaware of any freestanding legal obligation that law enforcement would have, either police or prosecutors, and of course we're aware that the uh, rules and ethical obligations pertaining to those two groups might be somewhat different, uh, but I'm aware of no freestanding obligation that either group would have to provide that information outside the context of an actual criminal prosecution. Of course, our Constitution provides uh, the due process right to Brady exculpatory material if indeed a defendant is uh, prosecuted for a crime, and that would trigger the obligation of the federal prosecutor's office, if it were a federal case or a state prosecutor's office if it were a state case, to produce to the defendant any exculpatory information in the possession of uh, that office or agency that in, in, would not extend to a cross-jurisdictional obligation to go looking for exculpatory evidence. As I mentioned in response to Mr. Nadler's question earlier, um, about four or five years ago, the Supreme Court decided a, a, a case called United States versus Ruiz which went to the question of what are the governmental obligations to provide such exculpatory information when a defendant pleads guilty. Of course, that's the bulk of our criminal justice system in 95% of all cases, including cases involving snitches, uh, involve a guilty plea. And the court curtailed 
the um, government's obligation to produce such exculpatory information, exculpatory information, for example, like the compensation paid to the informant witness in that case, because that witness, of course, would never go to trial. And one of the things that the, these committees could consider is amending the federal rules uh, or passing legislation that would require at least federal U.S. attorneys to provide that information in connection with plea bargaining um, so that light could be shed on the use of confidential informants in federal cases in the majority of cases that will, in fact, never be litigated in open court. Mr. Chairman, I see that my time has expired, but it, I also saw that everybody else seemed to be abusing uh, their time. So, uh, are you going to abuse your time too? The gentleman's recognized. It, 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 if if uh, if I might uh, explore one other area, because the other thing that struck me, especially in Mr. Brooks's testimony, um, um, was that there there seemed to be. Um, um, an attitude that um, uh, if 99% of, uh, of law enforcement was handling this appropriately, uh, there's some occupational risk, uh, and and, um, um, and they're acceptable. Um, it strikes me that uh, in cases such as Ms. Johnston's, uh, for example, and other cases where um, um, uh, snitches uh, really violate uh, and law enforcement violates, this is one of those uh, circumstances where there ought to be um, a legal term applied in the, in the criminal justice context, zero tolerance. Uh, how do you get to um, what would be necessary to get to a um, zero tolerance, uh, zero error um, um, posture in this area? Because I think it's one of those areas, I mean, uh, you can't bring Ms. Johnston back. Um, um, the benefits, uh, this, this is not... The, for Ms. Johnston, this is not a cost-benefit analysis. Um, when somebody makes an error, when somebody goes awry in law enforcement, um, 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 you can't do a cost-benefit analysis. So, uh, what, how do you, how do you, at least? get to a state where you absolutely minimize, if not uh, prevent, these kinds of injustices from happening. Mr. Brooks, Reverend Hutchins, Professor, uh, Mr. Murphy, uh, maybe uh, I could get you all to tell me what you think would be a reasonable approach uh, uh, to getting to as close to a zero tolerance uh, posture as we could get to. Yeah. Harlem Street stay flooded in white powder Like those motherfuckers running away from the Twin Towers Gunshots rock the earth like a meteor shower Bowling for Columbine fair, giving the media power Innocence devoured like a chicken spot snack box Government cocaine cooked in the ghetto crack rock Corrupt cops, false testimony at your arraignment Check the check, constant struggle to make the payments Working your whole life wondering where the day went The subway stays packed like a multicultural slave ship It's rush hour, 2.30 to 8, non-stop and people coming home after corporate sharecropping and